unfolding. I'm, I'm still progressing and going from stage to stage, but I'm perfect as I am right now because I'm a perfect result of all the decisions and choices and experiences I've gone through to this point. I'm the perfect result of my decision making with a lot of room to grow. Does everybody follow that? In, in oh, just in, in this little bit of time, I'm 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 explaining something and, and giving you examples of what I've gone through in my life. And, and so I'm gonna just take, I'm sitting here with Kim and she knows this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna expose the elephant in the room. So let me go all the way back. Yeah. Uh, I, I spent 25 years as a heroin addict. I was addicted to heroin and cocaine for 25 years. I've been clean now for 24 years, but I had got to a point in my addiction. I was on the way to prison and I had been in and out of prison, you know, you, you name it, I'd been there, you know, homeless, uh, the, the whole nine yards, right? Uh, and I, I, I just had enough. And I, I remember the day. It was January 27th, 1998. I'm sitting in a holding cell and I know I'm on the way to prison uh, once again. And I, I, I said, I've had enough. I got a visit from my mother and uh, the, the girlfriend that I had at the time. And I, I told uh, my mother, I said, I'm not even thinking to tell her a bunch of stories or, you know, make no promises, anything. I just said, Mama, I'm done. And I looked at the girl and I said, you might as well go about your business because uh, I'm not about that business that you're about anymore. When uh, I refuse to come out of here, the same person I am going in, because then I might as well stay here because I'm tired of this merry-go-round. And I did, ended up doing, I was sentenced <laughs> to two years in the state, but about six months in, uh, the feds decided that I needed, I owed them something also. So long story short, I ended up doing six years, but it was the best six years of my life. They had my body, but my mind was free. And I spent my six years changing me, taking, reading, taking every uh, class they had, reading uh, different books, uh, my mother would send me, you know, uh, books every month, uh, daily readings, and and you know, transformation took place. I devised uh, a goal, a set of goal. I found out what I like to do. I like to help others because I was doing that in prison, working in education, and I and I said that uh, that's what I'm gonna do when I get out. I want to get into a position where I can help others, and that's why I. I went into this field. I hadn't planned on getting a master's degree. I just was trying to get some time under my belt to where they would, uh, I would be accepted. But I know, I just inherently known for me to go into the places I wanted to go, I had to get some letters behind my name. Some of those little letters that they really look up to. So now I go into courtrooms in front of judges and lawyers and stuff. They have no idea about my background and I'm Mr. Smith this and Mr. Smith that, you know, and a lot of times I'd be thinking and laughing, they just don't know where I come from. But I said that to say this here, the, 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 the difference between me now and then is I changed my thinking. I realized that the mess that my life was, was of my creation. And that the same power that I misused to create that mess, I could use to create something wonderful. And that's what I said about doing. And so we have to realize okay, we, we have to realize that 
it's never too late to change your thinking. It's never too late to get whatever it is you want in life. It's just a matter of changing your thinking. Uh, I sit here before you now, uh, this year, oh, ooh, we in about five months, December 14th, this year, I'll be 71 years old. Uh, when I got my master's degree, I was 62 when I graduated with my master's. Uh, but uh, my main education <laughs> took place way before I went back to school. It took place on the streets of LA. Uh, right now, at this moment, I am the sum total of all my experiences. Those that I thought were bad along with those that I, I, I deemed good. Uh, those that I thought were bad became good because I learned from them. You know, uh, anything that, that makes you what you are and you're happy with what you are is a good thing. Although it may be painful, but out of that pain, something beautiful can come once you learn why you had to go through that pain. You know, all our experiences are created by us, not circumstances, but by us. Things happen. Things that you didn't even ask for happen. But the, the true essence of it is going to be how you, re, how you respond to what happens. Do you, do you let it knock you down and do you, do you go, woe is me and think, well, you know, the world is against you? Or do you look at it as an opportunity to learn, grow, and become even better at what it, whatever it is you do? You become a better person. It, it all starts with your thinking. Any questions? Come on, I said a whole lot of stuff. Y'all got to have, somebody got to have a question. I don't have a question. I just have a, well, first of all, thank you for sharing your story. Yes. Uh, I was nodding my head a lot because um, a lot of the things you spoke about um, when I started my life coaching classes with Kim, she, she teaches on a lot of this stuff. And yeah. when I met with her, um, I, was looking at life like why is life happening to me instead of I had to learn to retrain my brain to understand that you are what you attract and I was where I was at because I had I was projecting all of the negative stuff that was happening to me into the yeah. atmosphere from the way I was thinking right right um, so she helped me she's and she still helps me to this day um switched my the way that I think so that was just a really on time message to remind you because you know sometimes it is a um, well, at least for me, it is a daily retraining of your brain to, you have to do the work to allow your brain to stay in that space. So yeah. you don't slip up and go back into that negative space um, that you possibly were in before. So just yeah. thank you for that on-time message um, to remind yeah. me of that. Yeah, you, you, you know, our, our old self, those old habits, those bad habits, they, they are a very cruel taskmaster because they don't want to go away. They want to stay in power. So you, you have to consciously uh, do things in a correct way to create new habits, to replace those old habits. You know, the, but those, those old habits are like old memories. They don't never go away. To this day, and it is, like I said, it's been like 23, 24 years. To this day, thoughts of getting high, thoughts of that old lifestyle do come back, but I realize they have no power. And, 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 you know, because at the end of the day, we react to what ideas or thoughts we let, we focus on the most, you know, throughout the day. So if you, you look at your thoughts as seeds and your mind is fertile ground, whatever seed you let plant in that fertile ground is what is what you're going to get in your life. That's the tree you're going to get, right? So I, I don't let those negative thoughts take me grab no hold the soil or nothing I'm you know they don't they thrown into the fire so to speak you know but they keep coming back and they come back it ain't no big deal you know one of one of the things I learned is uh when you especially when you're looking at drugs a whole mountain of drugs could be sitting on the floor right now but it can't do nothing by itself I have to do something with it 
And long as I choose not to do anything with it, it's, it has no power. I have the power. We have the power. That's why I call anything, any idea or uh, notion of lack is an illusion. It's not real. How can you lack anything when there's so much abundance around you and flowing through you? You know. Hey, this is Lee. Based on what you just said, I was talking to Kim earlier today. And on that topic, we were literally saying that we're gifted by the creator for the talents that we had that we go to work with. But the system is made to trap us into giving that away when it's not actually built that you can do it for yourself. And one of the examples I used with her was, you know, imagine you can go to school and get $90,000 of debt, but it won't be $90,000 to either build a house or build a business where you can have some investments and do some things. So everything that you're saying is synchronicity for me mm -hmm. today. And, and the beauty is that that we don't know we can learn. <laughs> you, 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 you know, and the, it, what has held us back is that one illusion that is so powerful and, and, and self-doubt is that illusion. If we eliminate the self-doubt, then we, we live in a limitless universe. We don't go at certain things because we feel we'll never make it. You know, we don't invest in the stock market or, or, or other things because we don't trust it. We don't, you know, we have doubts. We're not going to be able to make it. I might lose my money, whatever, right? And, and we, you can't allow that to stop you from doing what you want to do. I was told that I would never, with the, my background, my record, my felony record, and I'm not going to go into how thick it is, but I was told I would never be able to get licensed as a therapist. And that was in direct contrast to what I believe, because I believe that if I did the right thing for the right reasons, I'd be able to accomplish whatever I want to accomplish. So I went through school anyway. It got down to me meeting before the board to, to get a license as a, as a, uh, intern, intern license. Everybody going in there, they stay in five minutes, coming on out, big old smiles. I'm the last person they call in. I'm in there 30 minutes. And they said, it was only three of them. They said, we can't make a decision on you. Uh, you have to sit before the whole board. That's the whole state board of, of Nevada. So they rescheduled for the next week. And the next week, they got people, I was in Las Vegas, they had people come down from Reno, Carson City, everywhere in Nevada. And I'm sitting before the whole board, right? And uh, they questioned me for about an hour or so. Uh, and finally, the, the president of the board said, apologize. Said, Mr. Smith, we've taken you through a whole lot. It, but it's just because we've never seen anyone with your level of criminal activity, your, the length of time that you spent doing the things that you did make the kind of changes that you've made. But it's apparent that you have changed and we would be hypocrites if we didn't give you a license because that's what we stand for, change. If, if, if we didn't believe in change, why would we be therapists working with our clients, trying to change them? And, and, uh, and I told her she didn't have to apologize because what they, what they questioned me on, what they took me through was no big deal because I'm the one that lived it. <laughs> I knew it better than anybody. And it, and it no longer was me. It, no, it was a part of me, but, it, but I became so much more than that. And, and so it, it, I moved on, you know, but uh, you, we can't let doubt continue to stop us from achieving what it is we are to achieve. You know, if, if whatever dream that you have can come into reality by you stepping out there in faith uh, before you even see the results. That's what faith is, stepping out 
into the unknown, but believing you're doing the right thing. Along the way, you might make mistakes, you correct them, but you keep going toward that goal, right? And you will achieve it. You know, you will achieve it. You just like, that's why I started off. I said, if you, if something you don't know, then you learn it. If you want to get in a stock market, but, but you're scared, learn it, learn it, and then get it, <laughs> then take a chance. I, I, I'm not afraid of taking chances like I used to be because I've overcome so much. I'm not afraid of getting broke and, 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 and going all the way down because I've been down before and I know how to get up. That makes sense? Yes, it does. It absolutely makes sense. Yes. So I just want to say thank you so much. Every time I show up here, I feel like I'm showing up with a right on time message. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in my notes, I wrote down, um, uh, which I like to call the Holy Trinity of manifestation, right? Yes. Which is what you think, exactly what you, exactly how you listed it is what I call the Holy Trinity of manifestation. The way you think um, induces the way you feel and the way you feel then produces that action and that action produces that manifestation, right? So yes. I call that yes. the Holy Trinity of manifestation. Yes. Um, so I just want to say thank you for your wisdom. You know, um, thank you for having the courage to actually do what you were supposed to do here on this plane. You know, you, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you know, they say one of the most richest place in the graveyard is people that take all their gifts with them because they don't, you know, they don't share that. Um, and I think especially as um, I call us light workers when we're here to help other people to transition from past into now and into future, right? I don't think sometimes we give ourselves enough credit for how consistency plays a part in exactly what you said. You get up, you just keep on going. You need to learn yeah. something. Okay, you figure it out and you, you keep on going. So thank you for that right on time message. Um, and you, yeah, you listed my holy trinity of manifestation. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's how it works. You think, yes. you feel, and you act. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good. Hi, my name is Naila. I have a few questions for you. Yes. Okay. Um, so throughout your evolution, um, at any point did you feel shame? And if so, how did you deal with it? Uh I felt shame when I was in my addiction. When I let go of my addiction, I let go of shame because I learned that shame is, is a false feeling. You, you don't have to feel shame for nothing you've done uh, for making a mistake. I still make mistakes. You, you know, so there are, we create emotions that we don't have to experience and shame is one of them. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, the shame, whatever shame I experienced was when I was in my addiction because I, I wasn't raised to be that. I didn't come from a family that where I had to be that. It was a choice I made. And, and I stayed away from my family because I know that they would be very, they were disappointed, but from a long distance. I didn't want to bring it into their face, right? Uh, now, I, there's, no, there's no shame since then, you know, because I, 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 I accepted who I was with nothing, when I had nothing, when I mean absolutely nothing on the way to prison with nothing but a dream, but a, but a hope that, you know, uh, there is a better life. And, and uh, yeah, and getting rid of shame was all part of that evolution. Thank you. Um, and also you mentioned that it was a part of you, but it wasn't you. How did um, you make, I'm sorry. I was speaking about my past life. Past right, experiences. exactly. Yes. Yeah. Right. So how did you make the separation in your mind? Like, it, how did you? There's no separation. It, like I said, it, it, right now, I'm the sum total of all my experiences. Mm -hmm. what, what changed it was during those years of drug use and criminal activity, there were all at different points, there were lessons to be learned, but I failed to learn them. 
That's why I was repeating it over and over and over. So when I changed my life, it, part of it was confronting all the monsters I had locked away in that closet. I had to open up that closet door and face all my fears and everything else, right? Fear, shame, whatever. And uh, found out that what I thought were monsters really were nothing. There were, there were, there were uh, uh, chances for me to learn something. And, and, and so I came out of that, like, it's like a light bulb went off and I said, bing, that's it. Right. And 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 I suddenly I, I learned all those lessons that were in front of me at all, all during all those years. And, and and it like it it speeded up my recovery. If, if, if I could if I could say that it speeded up my recovery, I because I, I'm telling you, after the end of that six years. I was so much more I, I was finally realizing what I was supposed to do. But it took all those 25 to 30 years of negativity in order to forge me into what I'm supposed to do. Now I'm able to go back and deal with the same individuals that, was, that are experiencing currently what I was going through and work with them. Nice, thank without, you. Without the fear of going back to that lifestyle myself. <laughs> Right, right. Thank you. Thank okay. you for sharing. I think a lot of us don't realize that, but we are all addicts of something in some way. Our drug yep. of choice is just different. That's yes. right. That's, that's it. That's right. That's it. That's one thing I learned. That's why I, I never put my, when they took me through, grilled me, it didn't bother me, you know, because all I did was I was a good person that made bad decisions for all those years, mm -hmm. you know. It, I believe in the goodness of everyone, regardless of where they may be in the path of life, you know, where, what stage they're in, you know, they're good. You just have good people that make bad decisions. Right. Because we all come from that one source that is good. Can I add something? Yes, yes. You might have a, another one or two that want to ask questions, but I have to ask that everything that he has told you all means that he found a place of non-judgment within himself. Yes. And non-judgment, because when I started looking at a lot of the records and things that I had to look at, because I'm the human resource person <laughs> on Michael, I had no <laughs> desire to tell other people what I saw, but I had to talk to him because what I seen was unbelievable, right? And it connected my thoughts with other things. So I had to question, like he said to you guys today, that he had been homeless at times, but he is, uh, you know, our clinical. And he had never spoke on that uh, in Las Vegas. I've worked with you about six years. Yeah. And he had never spoke of those things. So I began to pull things out of him. I did. Um, because it's, it's profitable. And it's also profitable for him to remember because like he said, you can't separate that. That's a part of who you are. And I appreciate that in him. That's the part of me that I, I, I long to pull things out of people that they don't see because it's the value that brings him to the place of who he is today, sitting before you and many people that he will talk to uh, in audiences. Now, who's next? Cause he's he's about to run up out of here. So let's finish up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so first and foremost, um, thank you for sharing. Yes. Um, I appreciated everything. I think the best, the one thing that I have to walk away with is that um, I am perfect, and I am the sum of all my parts. The good, the, what I deem as good, what I might deem as bad, I'm a sum of all of that because of the lessons that I've received make me perfect. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, had I listened to, had I been a part of this a year ago, two years ago, I probably would've been like, mm -mm, I don't believe that. So yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a testament to seeing myself with, with eyes of, no, 
I needed those experiences. I needed those lessons. I yes. wasn't learning. I was being stubborn. I was being hard headed. And now, okay. I almost like, okay, now, now that I've learned it, I've leveled up and yeah, I was always perfect. I just needed to accept that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're perfectly as we are, we, we're who we should be right now because we're the, we're always the, the sum total of all our experiences. That doesn't mean that you're through, you, it's just, but you know, right now you, you are who you, you're supposed to be. You know, now you got other experiences coming that are, that are laden with, with, with uh, uh, chances to learn more, to become more, and then you'll be perfect at another level because each level that we reach has its own challenges. And those challenges are not designed to tear you down, but they're designed to get you to the next level. Until, until we, we get to the level of uh, Christ, because there's Christ in each one of us, but we have to bring it out. We, it, it takes where, where, where Jesus was a genius, a, 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 a spiritual genius and, and, and intuitively knew all of it from the beginning, we have to work at it. But there's Christ in each one of us. And the challenges that we go through is what's pushing us closer to that Christhood, if you will. It's like the challenges is God's way of beckoning us to come to him. I, I, I said I wouldn't go to It's like a birthing process. Yes, it's like it, a birthing process. Yes, it yeah. is. It's exactly yeah. a birthing process. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. I said I wouldn't go do no church up in here every time. <laughs> He's gonna come back. <laughs> this is I'm proud of him. Um because um he said 15 minutes or thir no 30 minutes actually. And, Ooh, wait. and I'm telling you, this dude be on the move and uh you can't keep him still. He, you know, he be and 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 I, you know, really, really thank God for him and all that he's went through, his experiences, and even him sharing it, because now you can see that there is someone that has you know experienced a, a great level or impact of um i want to say trauma even um he doesn't show that but for those that get into their defeated feelings um what i know about him and his paperwork um and probing him is that the life that he had he hasn't even told y'all half of um what that that i picked out of him that would definitely build up a person where they could, in you guys' manner, where they would stand and remember his testimony and not allow defeat to um, uh, impart its feelings anymore. You would fight. Because when I see him, or when I hear him, uh, I think of that. And it makes me stronger. I don't know if I've ever told him that, but he should know because I pull at that part of him. That's an energy that will push you. Because you've seen someone that's like, you know, a forefather um, and uh, full of wisdom and you pull that wisdom out of them and it keeps pushing you. I'm not the type of person to misuse or use that. He's the kind of person that I would put before a million of people because it would save their lives. Because a lot of people do not think about having been on substance that long and overcoming that, then going to prison for six years, overcoming that, many people give up. This is a, you know, and this is not a, a drug rehab center. He is a self-made millionaire. I'm saying it. Yeah. Put okay. My, don't put my business in the street like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, I don't know. Uh, I already take that. I already take that. Up. No I limits. Yeah, I see. Right, right. No limits. That's yeah. That's all. I'm getting ready about. to say. Why stop at a million? Why didn't she go to be in there? Okay. Right. Be in there. I already picked up on it when you were talking. She ain't had to say nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's 
as you grow, your vision grows. Uh, I I say that, but when I was she was talking, I was thinking, you know, I I experienced everything. I experienced to this day uh, defeat, uh, uh, brick walls, things that I have to overcome still, right? But the, 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 there's a part of me that I guess that helped me turn my life around is I'm a fighter. <laughs> I, I don't, I, I won't allow, no, you, no, whatever it is, you cannot beat me. You know, because that's not my destiny. I, I'm, no, I'm an overcomer. I've never been an underachiever. <laughs> even, even in my drug years, I overachieved. I'm not, I've never been an underachiever. I've always done the most that whatever it is I've done, I would take it all the way. And I'm just so glad I changed direction. Tell them about Sunday school and when you can go. When oh, you they, ask the question. Oh, oh they, they, when I was a teenager, they put me out of church. <laughs> it, it was a summer school church. It's, and, I don't know, I might have been 13 and, 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 and the poor white lady. She say, she say, uh, I mean. It, yeah, it is so, go ahead, so you can go. She <laughs> said, she said uh, they was talking about, you know, the Bible and they had questions. So I had a question, I says, how is it that uh, Mary was a virgin, but she had a baby? And the teacher put me out the room. She said, you, you can go. She thought I was being, I was joking. I was serious as a heart attack. Because I couldn't understand that. That's a valid question, she, though. <laughs> she didn't know either. That's no, why she, she didn't. That's why she, put, that's why she put me out. Because she didn't know either. But that's the mind of the masters. Because masters ask questions. And other people accept what others give them. Amen? Hello. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Here we go. Masters. So... We'll have him back and um, thank God for you guys. Um, I'm going to, do you want me to give him all your number? <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. No, but I, you know, I like this, you know. I, you want to do it again? Sure. Huh? Yeah. So he'll sure. be back and um, we'll have him on to listen to you all as well. So yes. he, he coming on back in. Me and him used to do videos together, but it was premature. And now is the time. And he supported me a lot in um, the part of I am, a, you know, men of power. I got those T-shirts. Uh, yeah. yeah, he supported me in that. And um, so uh, we're going to pick it up. And Lee, you and him will connect for the men's mentoring. Yes. My cousin. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Ladies. Hey, I thought somebody, I see that last name, Smith. Yeah, we, we got to have yeah. some in common. Mm -hmm. That's him. Yeah. I'm Michael All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. And yeah. I will um, yeah, I talk got, to you soon. I got kids. So. You see? Yeah, now. He didn't want to stop, though. I, That's what... <laughs> I knew when he started preaching. Didn't y'all feel the preacher come in? <laughs> he couldn't mm -hmm. help himself. It just, yeah. it just started flowing on Yeah, out. the preacher. So <laughs> next time he comes on, uh, the preacher is going to flow more. I think I want to use him as we build in a master's class because we're going to do that next level. Um, next month, we'll start that. And okay. um, so thank you guys so much and God bless you. But we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it where we're all participating because that's where the true growth comes in because every component, every link of the chain has something to add to the chain. Right, right. Okay. All right. Thank all right. you. I'll talk to y'all later. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.